Ray Dalio Debt Crisis Explained Renowned investor Ray Dalio recently provided a thought-provoking analysis of the mounting levels of debt and its potential consequences, shedding light on what he considers to be one of the most influential forces shaping the economic landscape in our lifetime. Currently, the United States is shouldering a colossal debt load amounting to $32 trillion and has exacerbated the problem by suspending the debt ceiling until 2025. Furthermore, the potential risks faced by the banking system and the uncertainties posed by geopolitical tensions add further complexity to the debt crisis narrative. As the global economy stands at a critical juncture, the future trajectory of the debt crisis and its impact on financial stability remains uncertain. Hi! Allow me to welcome you to another video of Finance Sense, where we cover all the latest trends in the financial markets and the economy. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new to our channel, and turn on the notification bell to keep posted. With that being said, let's start! Ray Dalio delved into a discussion about the significant forces shaping the economic landscape, which he considered the most influential in our lifetime. One of these forces pertained to the mounting debt offerings and monetization levels. He questioned the value of money and pondered the dynamics of supply and demand within the context of this economic scenario. Taking a closer look at the mechanics of the situation, Dalio emphasized that a country's economics are not different from an individual or a company's. He emphasized that spending beyond one's means inevitably leads to debt, which must be repaid. The distinction, however, lies in the ability of governments to print money, a practice that raises important questions about its sustainability and the potential consequences it may bring. Similarly, Dalio identified two critical factors that could mark the end of this crisis. Firstly, he highlighted the significance of debt service payments, whereby those holding the debt expect to be repaid along with interest. These payments progressively erode available funds for other areas of expenditure, creating a cyclical effect wherein more debt must be incurred to meet financial obligations. This encroachment on spending becomes increasingly unsustainable as the debt burden compounds over time. Dahlia then pointed out that the United States' prolonged pattern of spending more than it earns necessitating financing its expenditures through the sale of bonds. This process essentially involves the government issuing IOUs to investors. The magnitude of the annual deficit determines the extent of borrowing required for survival. Presently, the U.S. carries an enormous debt burden of $32 trillion, and it has further extended the timeline by suspending the debt ceiling until 2025. However, the longer the government remains in a deficit, the closer it edges toward a potential full-blown debt crisis because the accumulated debt must be repaid. A few years ago, when the interest rates were remarkably low, the government did not have to allocate a significant portion of its resources to pay interest to bondholders. However, with interest rates now considerably higher, newly issued government debt will prove more expensive to service compared to the debt sold in previous years. Taking on debt can be advantageous if the upfront capital acquired through borrowing enables an increase in income, surpassing the cost of the debt. For instance, a business might secure a loan to construct a new store, expecting the revenue generated by the store will surpass the debt's cost. However, debt becomes detrimental when the opposite occurs. If an individual or business acquires debt but fails to raise their income sufficiently to cover the debt's expenses, they find themselves in a worse position than before. In the corporate realm, this situation often prompts a solution of taking on additional debt to repay the existing one leading to a negative spiral. This spiral manifests in two ways. First, the debt pile grows at an increasingly rapid rate. And second, the escalating interest payments erode the available pool of funds, leaving less cash for actual economic growth. Consequently, the economy faces constrained resources, hindering its potential for expansion. Continuing his analysis, Dalio turned his attention to another significant factor, the supply-demand balance issue. He explained that when people are unwilling to purchase an adequate amount of debt that needs to be sold, it triggers a larger crisis, a question of debt rollover. The consequences become even more pronounced when there is a lack of buyers for U.S. Treasuries during the debt rollover period. In such a situation, the responsibility falls upon the Federal Reserve to step in and rescue the day. To stabilize the market, 
the Federal Reserve would need to print additional money to acquire the surplus government bonds. However, Dalio cautioned that this approach could further devalue the U.S. dollar. Considering the upcoming issuance of a substantial amount of debt, he pointed out the ownership structure of the debt itself. Numerous entities, including banks and other governments, currently hold significant debt, leading to a critical problem. These entities own an excessive quantity of treasuries currently experiencing financial losses. Dalio then drew attention to the risks inherent in the banking system. He explained that the losses incurred by the banking system, including the central bank, are primarily due to holding bonds that have significantly decreased in value. Consequently, these institutions have suffered financial losses and face challenges in funding, especially with high interest rates. Dalio characterized this dynamic as inherently risky, signaling potential vulnerabilities within the system. Dalio proceeded to illustrate the potential repercussions of unrealized losses on U.S. government debt by citing the case of Silicon Valley Bank. He highlighted that the bank had become overly reliant on U.S. treasuries. As interest rates climbed, the value of these bonds diminished, leading to substantial losses that ultimately caused the bank's collapse. This example also illustrates that companies and countries such as Japan, China, and the UK have been affected by unrealized losses on U.S. government debt. These countries hold significant amounts of U.S. Treasury bonds in their portfolios. Furthermore, Dalio expressed concern that if the United States continues its current spending trajectory and issues a considerable number of treasuries in the future, a problem may arise due to insufficient buyers for U.S. debt. This issue becomes more pressing if other countries view their balance sheets as already excessively burdened with U.S. treasuries. Consequently, an influx of supply and a decrease in demand for U.S. debt could materialize. The potential consequences of reduced demand and increased supply of U.S. treasuries have far-reaching implications. It could impact the ability of the United States to finance its debt, potentially leading to a higher cost of borrowing and financial instability. Moreover, even in such a scenario where interest rates are already minimal, the supply-demand dynamics of the bond market remain inadequate. There simply isn't enough demand to absorb the bonds being issued. Consequently, the responsibility falls on the Federal Reserve to step in, print money, and purchase these bonds in order to maintain stability and redistribute wealth. This intervention aims to address the issue at hand. But it does not negate the fact that the United States is undoubtedly grappling with a substantial debt problem. The pressing question at this point is whether this problem will be resolved, controlled, or will continue to escalate, eventually transforming into a full-blown debt crisis. The outcome remains uncertain, as the intricate interplay between interest rates, supply and demand, and the actions of the Federal Reserve will ultimately determine the trajectory of the debt situation. The U.S. finds itself at a critical juncture, with the resolution of the debt problem hanging in the balance. Hi, it looks like you've reached the end of this video. Thank you for watching this far. Please subscribe and give a like if you enjoyed it, and comment your thoughts in the comments section. This is Finance Sense, helping you keep up with all the latest trends in the financial markets and the economy. See you around!